Hey everyone, I wanted to hop on today and do a gear speed explainer video for you. And um, if you want to follow along, grab a pen and some paper. Otherwise, I will post this and you can come back to it at a later date. So um, the question is, if gear A spins at 5 RPM, gear C spins at X RPM. Our goal is to determine how many times gear C spins if gear A spins at 5 RPM. So the first thing you want to do is count your teeth. In your test, you're, you're usually forced to count them, otherwise they could be given to you, but in this case we have to count them. So we're just going to start here and count around. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And leave the middle one, you don't need to worry about that. You do have to count the end. So we'll start here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, and then what we're going to do is use this formula and that is driver RPM times driver teeth equals driven RPM times driven teeth. Now in your test prep books, there are different formulas to use. I like to use this formula because it's easy to remember. Driver times driver equals driven times driven. And in the courses and the tutoring that I do, I also do an easier formula because this is an algebraic formula. If you're interested in that, then let me know or give me um, a private message and I can certainly help you with some online tutoring. Now we're going to plug in our numbers here. The driver RPM is given and that is 5 RPM. So we're going to put that in first. The driver teeth is 8. And on the other side here, the driven RPM is what we're trying to determine. So let's call that Y. And the driven teeth is 10. Okay. Now for algebra, you're going to do what you know first, and that is the multiplication. 5 times 8 is 40. And when you're multiplying a number and a variable together, you're just putting it together. So we can call that 10y. And then the whole idea behind algebra is to isolate the variable. To do that, we're going to divide it by the number it was multiplied by, which is 10. And then what we do on one side of the equation, we have to do on the other side, which is 10. So 40 divided by 10 is 4. And this 10 and this 10 cancels each other out. Therefore, y equals 4. Okay? Now, if that was the case, in order to test this to make sure that you're right, because you're working with an equation, this side when multiplied has to equal this side when multiplied. So 5 times 8 is 40. And if we plug in the 4 here for the y, 4 times 10 is 40. These are equivalent, therefore we know that this is correct. 